Hello and welcome back to Tea with Tracy. Come and see you live every Tuesday at 12, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate and home ownership related. Today we are continuing on with our regularly scheduled programming. Now, if you missed it last week, we uh, did a special two-year anniversary episode. Hard to believe Tea with Tracy has been going on for two years. And as part of that, we are doing some giveaways. So there is a two-hour mini organizing session, some gift certificates, and some Tea with Tracy swag. So if you have any interest in any of that, be sure to check out the post on my Instagram page, RealtorTracy24, and you can have a chance to win something for free. Don't, no no, uh, no need to do anything to, uh, to get into the drawing. So today we are going to be talking about lawn care. I have Scott Ateo of Greens Masters coming on to join us. And he's going to be talking about some of his, he's going to be answering the most asked questions that he gets this time of year for your lawns. So without further ado, let's get Scott on to join us. Hi, Scott. Hey, Tracy. How are you today? <laughs> All right, how are you doing? Everything's I, hectic right now. I'm doing great. <laughs> I know. I appreciate it. So Scott came in from, it's a gorgeous day outside today. So of course, he is out there working on all of our lawns. And so he uh, jumped in to the kitchen of the Owen TV studios <laughs> to, uh, to join us today um, so that he can come and give you some tips for your lawn and answer those most asked questions. So thank you so much for taking the time and uh, joining us. I really appreciate you being here today. No, uh, thank you. I appreciate you being on too. Yeah. <laughs> so you get asked so many questions, you know, especially this time of year as we're coming out of winter, heading into spring and getting ready for summer. And, um, you know, our lawns, you know, there's a transition that goes from the, the winter time into the spring. And I know you are getting asked lots of questions as to what do I need to do? So what are some of those um, most asked questions that you get? And what is your answer? Maybe we can get everybody to watch this and then you don't have to answer the question so many times they can just watch the video and get their answers. So that would be nice. Yes. <laughs> Um, generally people are asking when should I wake up my sprinklers? Okay. Um, they're also asking what, when's the first cut? What should I do for the first cut? Mm -hmm. Should I bag my clippings? Should I not bag? Should I dethatch my lawn? Um, should I aerate? Um, okay. stuff like that. General questions. Right. Um, when's the first application? That's always the big one. When, when is the first application? Shouldn't you get guys be out in March? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, so those are the, those are the, by far the most asked questions at okay. this time of year. Okay. So, um, let's start with the thatching. So, I mean, questions, you said you get questions on thatching and should you, you know, should you do it? Should you not? What is your answer, you know, for somebody who's asking you about that? Okay. So the first thing to understand is that there's a difference between a thatch layer and thatch in a lawn. So thatch in a lawn is just dead looking grass. Now it's not necessarily dead at this time of year and everybody thinks I've got thatch throughout my lawn, I need to dethatch. Most of that grass is actually live. It's just okay. waiting for the sunlight and the warm temperatures for the nutrients to get back up into the yellow grass blades so that they can recover from winter. Okay. Um, so no, you don't want to dethatch because you're actually pulling away really live grass that's going to come in great in the next couple of weeks, so long as the weather permits. Right. It'll come right <laughs> back and it'll look beautiful. And anything that is actually dead at this time, and just any blades that are really dead, they'll disintegrate on their own naturally. And that, that actually supplies a very nice nutrient source for the live grass that's still there. Okay. So it all goes back together. So patience, um, so patience is pretty important right yes, now then yep. as a homeowner. And, okay. And dethatching is super destructive on a lawn. Okay. Um, in my career in over 20 years now, I have recommended dethatching less than five times. Okay. It's very, so it's very, very rare. rare. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so don't dethatch, just, you know, wait for the grass to wake up on its own. I think you've told me before, like you can use your just standard rake if you just want to rake up like some of the, yep. you know, the dead leaves and, you know, and some of that, that is okay. Correct. Yeah. That, areas that are matted. Yeah. So everybody's also concerned about snow mold this time too. So I've got thatch, I've got, okay. I've got snow mold. 
a light raking for any areas that are matted just to fluff them up, not to tear them out, just to fluff them up. We'll get instant recovery. And also, if you want it, if you really want it to go a lot faster and you don't mind starting your mower up a little bit early, yeah. just do an initial cut. Just okay. the just the air suction action from the mower will often stimulate some new growth and get the lawn to wake up faster. Usually we have about seven days. Okay, so the mowing is not an actual like, hey, let's get the, the grass cut down. It's more of a just circulating the air, like waking it up and letting, Correct. letting yep. the lawn in your, know where. In your lopping a little bit of the tops off at the same time. And, okay. And that does actually stimulate new growth. Okay, all right, great. Um, now what about, you know, if we are starting to see as things are coming alive that, or maybe there's some bare spots in the lawn, um, you know, for grass seeding. Is this, uh, is this a good time to do seeding of our lawn? Uh, for small, small areas. Okay. Um, so, so for those of us that own dogs, right now is a good, good time to try to repair some of the spotting that they did. But uh, especially with dog spotting and with any larger berries, so we'll start there. Dog spotting larger berries, you actually want to add some topsoil. Okay. Um, just yep. bags of topsoil if they're smaller areas. If you really have large berry areas, you're going to have to get some dumps for you. Um, but you want to go with about two inches and put the seed on top of those spots. Okay. Um, so heavy that you can't see the dirt. Don't go sparse with it because okay. it'll take a lot longer to germinate and fill in. If you go really heavy, cover the dirt completely, you're good. Okay. Um, and then you don't want to cover that with anything. Don't mix it into the dirt, nothing. Just let the seed go in and germinate on its own. Um, it's got a microscopic hair on the tip that drills its way into the soil. That okay. drilling action actually causes germination quickly. Oh. So if you cover it, it doesn't drill its way in, and it waits for the right temperatures, which could be months from now. Okay. So, so you, when you just you, leave it set. When you say covering, because I know a lot of people, you know, what they end up doing, I see, or they say, you know, when they put grass seed down, they go and put a layer of like straw down. Is that what you're saying? Don't put no, that down. Don't do that either. Don't do, okay. um, <laughs> yes, they do sell sterilized in some places. They do sell sterilized um, a tacky straw, okay. which works, works okay, but you're still covering it. Don't worry. Birds don't eat seed. Um, just only finches do. And maybe a couple of other small birds they are not going to eat your seed. The big birds that are out there aren't eating your seed. They're looking for worms. Bare dirt is really easy to see them in. Okay. Um, so straw, unless you get it sterilized, has hay seed in it. And you will be growing hay and tall fescue and a whole bunch of invasive grasses that you don't want in that area. So unless you want hay, then don't right. put it down. So. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yep. All right. That's that's great. I know. I know you've so you've taken care of my lawn for many, many years and you've given me, you know, lots of tips and um Great information on, you know, because when I first moved into my house, um, I had no front lawn. Like, it burned up. There was, you know, it, and, and there was one cacti. I kid you not. I think you remember there was one, like, yep. cacti that was growing there. And um, so, yeah, it went from that to, um, you know, I've had a nice lush green lawn when I when I water it enough. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right. So seeding, you can do small spots, but otherwise wait till fall. It, right. For it. general overseeding, if it's generally thin, um, yeah. right now is not the time to really try to determine that. Um, because grass, even if it looks like it's barren spots, often still has a root system. And it, it will take it'll take a month or two before you know really what's actually barren and what's not. Okay. The best time to seed genetically for grass is September and October. Um, I recommend starting as early as September 1st. Usually by the 15th of September, we've got great seed growing weather here. Temperatures are back down into the 70s. We've got plenty of rain. Um, there's not often a September, October drought, whereas in spring in Michigan, especially the last five years, we've had long droughts and really early summers. So right now, not ideal to grass seed unless you're planning on watering it in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> Okay. In, in fall, it really is just the best time to do it. And it gives you time to know, especially with the price of seed right now, yeah. it gives you time to know what you need and what you don't. Okay. Okay. That's great advice. And so with that, you, you mentioned, unless you're planning on doing a lot of watering, what, what do you typically recommend as far as when do we get our sprinkling systems opened up and ready to go? So ideally, everyone would have called sometime in November and December and scheduled this for this year. <laughs> so that early, because sprinkler okay, so companies. I'm a little so, behind because it's what April 12th. 
and I have not yep. made the call yet, Scott. Uh, so for those of us who have not made that call yeah. yet, make that call and okay. SAP get scheduled because once they book up, it can yeah. be a long time before they get out. We right. often see June um, people getting their sprinklers turned on in June, and we have drought and heat as soon as May 1st sometimes. Okay. Um, so it's ideal to get it woken up by the end of April. And don't you don't necessarily have to use it at that time. Just wait right. until temperatures hit 72 to 75 plus degrees a day, and we're not getting rain. Because um, hopefully Mother Nature at this time of year, and it definitely is this year, is providing plenty of water. Yes. So as soon as you need it, you want them already woken up. Okay. Don't wait until the last minute. So we don't need it, but just get them ready so they're ready to go. What would be the first sign that it's like, okay, it's time to run that inaugural, uh, you know, <laughs> right. cycle of this of the sprinkling system? Actually, the very first time is when you start seeing lawns turn yellow. Okay. Um, it, by then, it's actually too late. And okay. we get this, every company has ever worked for, my company, we all get the same thing. Somebody burned my lawn guess what? It was so dry that when you <laughs> ran your lawnmower over it or your commercial cutter ran his lawnmower over it, it caused nice tire marks. Mm. Those are called stress fractures. So if you're at that point where you've got tire marks in your grass, you went way past the time in which you started to start to watering. Okay. Really, you want to make sure that the lawn's getting wet at this time of year with these temperatures at least once a week, Okay. Um, which again, this year we got plenty. But once the temperatures start hitting 75 to 80 degrees, you should be trying to water if it's not raining at least every three days or so. And once it starts hitting 80 plus every other day at a minimum, and okay. here in Lake Orion, we've got water restrictions. So every other day is just fine for most lawns, Okay. Um, depending on the soil, right. which is another issue. If you got sandy soil or you got heavy clay, more water is required. If you have great soil and it's partially shaded, obviously a lot less water is required. Right. Uh, those people who have the uh, partially shaded lawns and uh, not sandy soil are very, I, I, yep. I, uh, <laughs> I, envy, I envy you. I am not <laughs> one of those. I am not one of those. So, oh, so is there anything else that, that we should know or some of the, you know, questions? Oh, you mentioned aeration. Is that something that should be done? you know, at this time of year? Depends on the soil type. And that is actually a really big issue this time of year. So okay. all of us that have new homes and new mm -hmm. subdivisions, and I won't mention the major builder, but there's a yeah. couple of major builders here. They're notorious for not putting down any topsoil on their right. clay-based and rock-based lawns. For those lawns specifically, and specifically in the case of lawns that historically have disease issues, aerating in the spring and fall is really, really beneficial. Okay. Um, and for clay-based lawns especially, it's beneficial because it's going to help down cut, cut down on your water bill. Uh, um, what ends up happening is that aeration is going to loosen up the soil so water can actually be promoted through the root system of the grass rather than burn off or run off. Um, and it can actually be used. Okay. And for the clay-based soil, you also have the opposite problem where you have lawns that have too much water pooling because it has nowhere to go and it can't sink in. The aeration, again, loosens up that soil, allows the water to penetrate, so it can actually get used instead of sitting there and rotting the grass. Okay. All right. So it depends. It's 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 lawn-specific, um, and yeah. so it's probably something that you should check in with your lawn professional if it's Scott, he'll be happy to. Uh, you get sure. you get the notes, and you know you know what you need to do, and you know what your yep. <laughs> what your lawn is. So, um, anything else this time of year? I know we're going to have you back on uh, towards the end of the summer, and you're going to talk a little more in detail about when we do need to um, do some grass seed and 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 you know the process for that. So we're going to have you back on to talk about that in more detail later on this year, but is there anything else this time of year that um, homeowners should know about their lawns and getting it ready for the season? So the, so the big one this time of year, especially for customers who did not have pre preventative done last year, mm -hmm. you need to keep an eye out for skunks. So if you have skunks digging up your lawn, you for sure have grubs yeah, yes. and you need to take care of that. That's a contact killer. And I always try to go with preventatives. Number one, preventatives are not non-carcinogenic and they have a 98% effectiveness. So in my case, I guarantee our grub control and if it doesn't work. I just take care of it. Um, but it's 98% effective. Whereas the contact killer, Scott's grub X, 
contact killers that even even the higher end stuff that we use, all of it has a fail rate that is higher than 2%. And many of them are carcinogenic. So we don't necessarily want to use them on our lawns. But if you've got skunks tearing it up, it can cost thousands of dollars to replace it. Um, not to mention that grubs themselves do a significant amount of damage. So right yes. now, if you're seeing skunks, if you're seeing a massive die off areas and the roots and the roots just pull up without any root system attached, then you have grubs and contact killers necessary because preventatives cannot be done until the end of May and June time frame. Okay. Um, because they they're they're targeting very very specific cycle in the grub life cycle to kill them at that time. And the other nice thing is that grub preventatives don't kill any other type of insects. It is just okay. targeting that insect, whereas all contact killers also target other insects. So okay. some of those are beneficial and we want them in our lawns. Right. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind. Yes. Before uh, many years ago, <laughs> I, uh, I, you know, if you see the, yep. the tearing up of your lawn and you're like, what did somebody, you know, when the lawn, it, it almost looked like when somebody was, when the lawn was wet. Like somebody rode their bike through and just like skidded and skunks. Yep. And they and they look like they'll they'll make it look like it was aerated. I have seen new sod actually yeah. roll back um, with skunks looking for the for the grubs. I've had two customers in my career actually called the police because they thought vandals had uh, <laughs> had taken <laughs> had taken shovels through their lawn. Oh, yep. It yeah. was skunks. It does it does look like somebody vandalized your lawn. I, yes, it really it does. does look that way. So <laughs> and something has yes. <laughs> so. So, all right. Well, thank you so much, Scott. Thank you for joining us today. Again, I appreciate you taking the time. I know it, you're right in the, you know, the start of your busy season. So I, I appreciate you coming, you know, coming out and joining us and giving us um, some great information on our lawns. Um, thank you all for tuning in, whether live or on the replay. And um, you can always get in touch. I can put you in touch with Scott if you have more questions on your lawn specifically. So thank you so much for joining. And uh, we'll see you all next Tuesday on Tea with Tracy. Have a great day. Thanks again, Tracy. Thank you. Bye-bye.